Hi, my name is Dr. Madhu Pai. I'm a professor at McGill University, Montreal. I'm a tuberculosis researcher. I'm the Associate Director of the McGill International TB Center and Director of McGill Global Health Programs. So what is the ideal or the best diagnostic algorithm for tuberculosis today? According to the World Health Organization, Global Laboratory Initiative, GLI and other international agencies, the best algorithm for uh, TB today will begin with the gene expert test for TB because a gene expert is far superior to smear microscopy in its sensitivity, specificity, and its ability to detect drug resistance at the same time. So if you can, if you have access to gene expert in your setting, and if your patients can afford it, then gene expert on a sputum, a single gene expert on a sputum sample is the best start point for the algorithm. Now, gene expert will detect MTB at the same time will also give you results on rifampicin resistance. Rifampicin resistance is an excellent marker for MDR-TB. So you, you, when your gene expert results comes back, then you look at the result. If gene expert is negative, then if you still suspect TB, then you will have to rely on your clinical judgment, use other diagnostic tests as a li liquid culture, for example, or if you still are worried about TB, maybe you can repeat the gene expert one more time. And if, it can, if all tests are negative, then it is up to you to use your clinical judgment and then rule out TB and look for other causes of the person's symptoms. If gene expert is MTB positive but rifampicin negative, then that means this is standard drug sensitive TB and you can start TB therapy using the standard six months HRZD regimen first line drug regimen. If MTB is detected and rifampicin is resistant, then that is a very strong indication that your patient has MDR-TB. But before you begin treatment, you still would need to confirm that this is actually MDR-TB or not. So a rifampicin resistance result should always be followed up by additional tests. So what other tests could you use in a rifampicin resistant patient? Well, you could use a line probe assay there's a line probe assay for first line drugs, INH and rifampicin. There's a line probe assay for second line drugs, which includes fluoroquinolones as well as second line in injectable drugs. Both LPAs are available in India and approved by World Health Organization and can be used as a follow up test to rifampicin resistance. Now, depending on the resistance pattern in the LPAs, you can then decide how to manage your patient. But while you're waiting for the LPA results, you can immediately initiate second line therapy empirically while waiting for the second line uh, LPA results to come back. And then the best way of managing drug resistance in this situation would be an individualized DST guided therapy, which requires phenotypic uh, culture based DST, which can look at a wide range of first line as well as second line drugs. And then based on the resistance profile, you could create a constructor MDR regimen, which should include at least five different active drugs. And there are specific guidelines on how to create those um, uh, MDR regimens. So in short, the ideal algorithm for TB today would be to begin with a single gene expert. And if it's MTB alone that is positive, then a first line drug regimen can be used. If rifampicin is resistant, then that requires additional testing, uh, tests like LPA and liquid cultures in order to come up with the correct re drug regimen for MDRTB. However, although the gene expert based algorithm would be ideal to use, it's not uh, always available or accessible or affordable. In that situation, uh, the um, guidelines recommend that one could begin with sputum smears as the initial start point, uh, preferably with a chest x-ray at the same time. If the sputum smear is positive, then that immediately confirms uh, pulmonary tuberculosis, but it does not tell us whether the patient has MDR or not. So a positive sputum smear should then undergo, uh, that patient should then undergo a DST, and that could be uh, gene expert or LPA or liquid cultures to decide whether the patient has MDR or not. If none of those MDR tests are positive, then one could begin standard first line therapy with four drugs. If sputum smears are negative and you are still worried about TB in your patient, then you could then reflex to a more sensitive test and gene expert would be the ideal test to use. Even in smear negative patients, gene expert 
um, takes up about 70% of TB. That means it has fairly high sensitivity, although not perfect sensitivity in smear negative TB. So although a gene expert based algorithm is the ideal way of diagnosing TB, um, not all settings have gene expert or not all patients are able to afford it. In that situation, there are two, um, there's a second algorithm that can be used as you can see on the, on the slide. In this algorithm, one should first check whether the patient meets one of three criteria. A child with suspected TB, anyone with uh, risk factors for MDR, that includes treatment failures, previous uh, tuberculosis therapy, or contact with someone with MDR TB, and anyone with HIV. These three groups, people living with HIV, children, and those with MDR risk factors, should be prioritized for gene expert as the frontline first test. All others can receive sputum smears and two smears should be done. Ideally, two uh, smears fluorescent stain would be the best way of doing microscopy. If the smear is positive, then it gives you great confidence that this person has pulmonary TB and then you can go ahead with managing the patient as TB. If the smear is negative and you're still worried about TB, well then in this particular patient, you could do a gene expert on a smear negative sample to see if this uh, patient has TB or not. The sensitivity of gene expert in smear negative TB is about 70%, which means even if the smear is negative, gene expert can still diagnose TB and therefore it is okay to first do sputum smears and if the smear is negative, then do a gene expert subsequently on this particular patient.